The following podcast contains references to the consumption of alcohol. If you are not of legal drinking age, please do not consume alcohol. Also, if you are of legal drinking age, please drink responsibly. Wait, can you give us a quick update on the Spider-Verse? This is a show where we have a drink, and we try to be succinct, and then we talk about Mac and me for 15 minutes. Hi, welcome to the part of the podcast where we make sure our house is not getting burned down. Matthew just ran off to double check a match, and hopefully he comes back and nothing has been on fire. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hour. My name is Matthew, and my favorite Twilight movie is Eclipse. And my name is Ryan, and my favorite Twilight movie is Twilight 1. Ooh, The, the Reckoning. <laughs> the Reckoning. <laughs> Uh, yep. So this is a podcast where we have a drink, try to be succinct, and sometimes we talk about the Twilight movies. <laughs> Specifically today, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yep, but that's the official title. That's the official title, canon. It's canon? Look it up on IMDb. <laughs> um... But before we get into that, we have a drink. Ryan, my friend, my buddy, my guy, the person who made me watch all five Twilight movies. <laughs> <laughs> After I only made you watch one Mr. Bean movie. Uh, what are you drinking we've today? Watched, we've watched two Mr. Bean movies, thank you. Have we? Yeah, we watched Rat Race. Oh, well then... Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's barely in Rat Race. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, so, full disclosure, it's the same day we watched the first Twilight. Sorry, we watched the first, last Twilight. <laughs> the penultimate Twilight. <laughs> and this is just a few hours later, um, after watching the last, last Twilight. The ultimate Twilight. <laughs> Uh, so I'm still drinking the Boulevard Tropical Slam Tart Come Island Ale. Come on and slam. I did not ask you last time, but how is that? That sounds pretty good to me. It's good. It's, um, I mean, like, it's a it's a fruit beer, so it's pretty sweet, but it mm -hmm. it's sweet, but it's not syrupy, which I like. Yeah, have you it's had like some... Oh, I'm have sorry, had... go ahead. No, you go. I was going to say, what? have you had Trop Top? It's no. a mother's. Okay. No. I don't live in Springfield. That's fair. But yeah, is it is it like a summer? That is that a summary, would you say? Oh yeah, for sure. It's good. I, again, like it's, it's pretty sweet, which I'm kind of back and forth on, um, mm -hmm. but... Bought a six pack of it. <laughs> Gonna drink it. Yeah. What are you drinking today, Matthew? Uh, like you said, it's the same day <laughs> from our last one. <laughs> so I'm still also drinking a uh, Founders All Day IPA because this is an all day recording sesh. Love it. Is that really why you bought it or is it one that you've been wanting to try? Uh, I've had it before and it's... I mean, it's good. It's it's seven or it's not seven. It's four point seven, which mm. is also part of the reason why percent alcohol, which is also a reason why because I was like, I could probably drink a few of these and be able to record <laughs> <laughs> an episode of a podcast. But yeah, but can you record two episodes of a podcast? Time will tell. <laughs> okay. So we watched Breaking Dawn Part 2. We did. And we have we... a long-standing <laughs> tradition of how this goes when we talk about Twilight specifically. Mm -hmm. So Matthew, you know what time it is? <laughs> it's recap time, baby. <laughs> Everything's forgiven, right? Here's a $50. It's recap time. You're going to tell us what happens in the movie. I'm going to preface this with a disclaimer. 
<laughs> yeah. Before watching this movie, I have had three beers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 3 p.m. <laughs> it is 3 p.m. Illuminati confirmed? Multiverse mm. of Madness spoilers? Mm. <laughs> I'm so what? sorry. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I will preface this also with coming off this last one. I think we both were kind of not excited to watch this movie. (laughs) Maybe I was excited to watch you watch this movie. Okay, that's that's fair. But I was like, how (laughs) sad is this one going to make me? And I say zero. Spoiler alert, it didn't make me sad, but the ending did kind of make me a little angry. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to that. Okay, so we'll, this movie we'll opens. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. Seconds after the last one ends. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, maybe seconds before the last one ends. Yeah. One could say. We got the full eye open both times. Yep. So, Bella opens her eyes. I do have a quick question. Do you think Avatar is going to pull the same thing? The last Airbender or... The James Cameron one? Because I've that's not... also how that one ended? I've not seen that one. I have not seen that in the film. <sighs> really? So, no. I, I was... feel like they came out around the same time and they were both very popular. <laughs> I was staunchly against Avatar when it came out because I thought all the hype was because it was in 3D. Mm, I can see that. And I felt like it, it, it felt more like a gimmick than an actual good movie to me. And so I was yeah, I, very I much that. against it. I get that. Although I did see the trailer for the second one, and it looks about the same, so. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not talking about Avatar today. <laughs> we're not um, talking about Avatar today. Although okay. we might be. There is a character who is kind of like the other Avatar. <laughs> Mm, okay. Mm. So this movie begins. Um so long ago the four nations lived in harmony, <laughs> but then the Fire Nation attacked. No, Matthew. <laughs> it was a goof. Um Good joke, Matthew. Good joke. So, okay, this movie really opens <laughs> with um Bella. Bella's eyes are open wide. Mm-hmm. She is. She's seeing red. Not figuratively or literally. But her. Irises? Is that what that's called? Mm hmm. Her irises are red. Because she's a vampire. Now. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard for me to describe this movie um (laughs) so edward takes bella out on her first hunt Mm -hmm. next correct there's nothing else in between that okay i mean they like hug he like she like hugs them really tight and it's stressful but like nothing major has happened okay so yeah so they go out on a hunt they find Mm -hmm. a deer like in the first movie, when when Ed, Ed is it Edward in the first one that's hunting the deer at the beginning. I think it's implied, but I don't think that they ever show it. Okay, but they they find a deer, and Bella's about to pounce on it, and then cut away to some random person climbing a mountain, and they scrape their knee, and then Bella's like, "Oh, blood! Human blood! I need human blood!" And then she runs, and like. Climbs the mountain freehand by, like, punching into it. And then Edward's like, no. That's bad. Only Mm -hmm. I get to kill people. (laughs) Um, And then Bella's like, okay. I will not kill this person. And then they go back to the deer. And a mountain lion almost kills the deer. But then Bella kills the mountain lion instead of the deer. Hinting at her protective nature, or maybe I'm reading too much into it. More at 11. I think she just was hungry. Okay. 
I don't I mean, think she, that it she's, was. She she's... was because she, she was going to eat the deer, but a mountain lion's blood was probably cooler to her. I don't. I read it more as like she's going after the predators and not the the defenseless prey. But... No, I think I think in the movies they talk about how Edward's preference is mountain lions. Okay, so I, I and just so they were just like, oh, she's just like Edward, yeah. Okay, again, I, once again, you're putting more thought <laughs> into this than Stephanie Meyer did. Okay, so they go back to the Colon house, mm-hmm. and they see Jacob, and he has imprinted on Renesme. He has, but Bella doesn't know that. And then they tell Bella, and she's like, "You you imprinted on my child. She's a baby." And then she talks in a Batman voice <laughs> for some reason. Do you remember what Jacob nicknamed the baby? Nessie. After the yes. Loch Ness Monster. And I rolled I... my eyes so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I don't remember what happens next, but somehow it everybody gets becomes chill about it. Yeah, I think they just get over it. Okay. Um. Hmm. 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 Mm. <laughs> and then some stuff happens. Um, okay. So they get back. Next thing I remember is that Charlie keeps calling about Bella because he doesn't you skipped, know. You skipped the house. I skipped the house. What happens at the house? The present. The present. They oh, give Bella the, a they, house. They give Edward and Bella a house for their family. Yeah. So, like, time passed. Edward and Bella spend the night at the house doing mm-hmm. married coupled things. <laughs> Banging 24-7. And it goes to the next day. Okay. And that's when they come back and Charlie's been calling. Yeah. Because last Charlie knew, Bella was ill with a bug. And getting progressively from, worse. I assume yeah. that they had been updating, trying to prepare him that she's dead. Mm-hmm. And Carlisle is like, we need to tell Charlie that Bella's dead because he needs time to grieve. And mm-hmm. nobody can know that she's alive. And then Jacob's like, hey, about that. <laughs> I got naked in front of Charlie and turned into a wolf. Because Carlisle said that they were going to be leaving. Yeah. Because they, they can't have anybody seeing Bella. And Jacob um, didn't want that. Mm-hmm. Real quick. Yes. Do you want to live in that house that Bella and Edward got? Because I kind of do. Like that house. I thought, you, I thought you hated all the lights. It It did have... Like, 80% too many lamps. But I, if I could, like, take some of those lamps out, that would They're be They're wall-mounted, buddy. You can't. <laughs> no, but there were, like, five lamps that weren't wall-mounted in there, too. Okay. If I could take those I, lamps out. Yeah, I guess it would be fine to live there. I don't know. You can live there. I'll live in the big colon house, because I want okay. all those windows. I guess basically what I'm saying is I just want to be Tom Bombadil. <laughs> <laughs> Just live out in the forest and be weird. <laughs> Have a nice hat. Um, but anyway, so Charlie knows now that Bella has changed, but he doesn't know what that means. Mm-hmm. And they told Jacob told Charlie that Edward and Bella were adopting their niece, but that's really a Renesme. And she's yes. just growing like nobody's business. Horrible CGI <laughs> child. The terrified. We'll get to the scary baby later. Yeah. Okay. So Charlie shows up and sees Bella. He's like, are we cool? And she's like, we're cool. And he's like, okay, I guess I'll go then. And then. And then I feel like the next thing is there's a montage of Renesme growing. Mm-hmm. And then... They were worried that she was going to die because she's growing so rapidly. Mm-hmm. And then... 
Renesme and Bella and Jacob are out playing in the snow. Mm-hmm. And one of the Denali coven sees Renesme and is like, oh shit, that's an immortal child. They're bad news. I'm going to go tell Michael Sheen, who's having the most fun in this movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it, it, it becomes apparent that the Collins are going to have a problem with the Volturi. Mm-hmm. Because the Volturi don't want an immortal child around for some reason. Yes. So the idea of the immortal child Mm -hmm. is like a young infant turned full vampire. And apparently in the lore, even though half of the... The age, like your brain doesn't continue to progress... Unlike an interview with a vampire, vampires. So, mm-hmm. like, the kid's gonna stay five forever. Oh, uh. So mm. they're not able to, um, like, be reasoned with. And so they were dangerous because a tantrum could wipe out a whole town. And that's kind of hard to keep a secret when mm-hmm. you're having to just pretend a whole town never existed. Yeah. I didn't. It that didn't click when I was watching the movie, but I don't love how that reads to me. Yeah, don't either. Again, yeah, but I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna dwell on that. But yeah, just don't love that. Just don't love the optics on that. Um, hmm. But yeah, so the the Collins start gathering witnesses to their cause, mm-hmm. which. Why have these characters not been in this these films before this? Because I I love this. So, spoiler alert. There's there's at the be- I I don't know that this is a spoiler because it's the very first thing that happens. But before the movie, there's a there's like credits, and it starts <laughs> listing all the people, and it's like Lee Pace, Rami Malek, and it's like who what what? <laughs> this is gonna be wild. So basically. They go and, like, recruit people for their cause. Like, the Denali people that we saw in the last movie at the wedding. Rami Malek, who is from Egypt. Lee Pace, who just kind of shows up. (laughs) Um, Some Irish vampires that we don't ever hear speak. Except one. Yeah, we do. We we hear (laughs) one, and they do not have an Irish accent in the least. Um... (laughs) Some uh, problematic vampires from the Amazon, maybe. Um, some vampires from Russia? Who have fun accents? Or Transylvania? Where are they supposed to I, be from? I think, I think they're supposed to be from Transylvania. Like okay. the OG. They read Russian they... to me, but I don't know. <laughs> yep. yep. Again. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so they basically just like recruit a bunch of vampires that we have not seen beforehand. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh they're supposed to be their witnesses that the immortal child is not really an immortal child, but she's something different. She's half human, half vampire. Quote All Lee. CGI. <laughs> uh which if you've watched the Blade films you know, as a dampier, but apparently nobody in this film franchise has ever seen the Blade films. Not once. Um, but yeah, so... Then they spend some time hanging out with the people they've recruited. And they learn that Bella is a shield? Okay, which you means did, that she you can... You skipped a little bit. What I skip? The fact that uh, more and more wolves are coming through. Oh, yeah. The the wolves. And they're, they're, there are more wolves because there are more vampires around. Yeah. And they're, like, turning a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, is there's, sad. There's a little guy who's a wolf. A little baby, little baby man with little cheeks. It was sad. I didn't yeah. like the idea of that. That made me sad. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point of this movie. Yeah. But really what part of Twilight does not make you sad? 
Um, the ending. <laughs> God, that ending. So we'll get there. <laughs> um, so they, the wolves are multiplying, and then uh, Bella's a shield is where you are. Out. Yeah, Bella's Bella's a shield, which means she can protect herself and maybe some other people around her from like other people's powers. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? People are getting a lot more powers in this film. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they kind of spend some time training Bella. And Alice and Jasper disappear. Then... They realize they realize that the Volturi are coming, and the way the Volturi works is they will essentially wipe out a whole clan except for a person that they would like to recruit. Mm-hmm. And Alice would have been the target of that, so Alice right. comes up with a plan and leaves, and continue. Do you remember, okay. or do I need to keep going? So the next thing I remember is the big battle, but I think there's something in between. There is something in between. So Alice wrote a note on a piece of paper from a book and ripped Mm -hmm. the page out. And then, like, a week or so before the big fight, Alice had written a note in the rest of the book for Bella only, because Bella's the only one who can't have her mind read. Mm Mm-hmm. That has a name of a gentleman on it in Seattle. So Bella goes to Seattle to meet him and gets... Gets a a passport for Jacob and Renesme, who somehow they have a passport quality photo of. (laughs) Both of these individuals. (laughs) Both of these individuals, somehow. I don't know. Don't, don't, Don't think about it too hard. Um... So, that kind of becomes the backup plan, right? Mm -hmm. Is that if something goes wrong, Jacob will take Renesmee because he's imprinted on her. And they'll Mm -hmm. go somewhere? Do they ever say where they're going? No. I don't think so. Nobody can know. So. Bella packs up that Jansport. (laughs) Yep. Got a good Jansport. Got some good, uh, some more good product placement in this film. Um, now is the big parlay between the vampires, or the Collins and the wolves and their witnesses and the Volturi and their witnesses. Mm-hmm. Correct? Okay. Yes. So they're about a football field's length away from each other and Colin or uh, Carlisle and Aro are whispering <laughs> to each other. <laughs> Somehow. Um, and They got good hearing. They don't have to be close to each other to hear. I guess so. That's, um, literally, that's literally it. <laughs> I'm not thinking about this movie too hard anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I don't remember exactly how the conversation goes, but essentially... It kind of, like, escalates, and then Alice and Jasper show up, Mm -hmm. and Aro's like, ooh, Alice, I want to talk to you, and then Alice is like, hey, yep, please, yep. So, Arrow has Edward come over to see, because he can see, like, their memories, like, all of their memories. Mm-hmm. He has Edward come over, learns that she is not an immortal child. Yes, 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 yes. And then he asks to meet her. She comes up to meet him and touches his face. And he does that giddy little laugh because he can yep. hear her funny little heartbeat. Yep. Having the and most then, fun. <laughs> yeah. And then they go back. And they bring Irina forward, who was the informant. Mm -hmm. And she gets crunched. She gets killed. Her sisters try to attack. 
but they're held back and like reasoned with because it would start an all-out fight. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Aro is like, "Hey, we need to kill this child because she's an unknown, and we're we're all about that known and safe." And that the humans are now a threat because, because they can technology. bear children. Yeah, because of technology. That's right. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know. It was the weirdest, like. Yeah, because it wasn't. It wasn't even technology that did it. <laughs> like, no, it was just good old fashioned. It's like the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> yeah, but um. So now is when Alice and Jasper come out, right? And mm-hmm. Alice shows. Alice is like, I, I can. She's not a threat, and I. Or, they're not a threat, and I can prove it. And then mm-hmm. she touches Aro, and then there's a big old fight. Because she realizes that it doesn't matter what she shows him. Mm-hmm. He's gonna do what he wants. And so then she they take... turns to Bella and says, "Now." So Bella. Bella tells Jacob and Renesme to get out. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't then, want you anymore. And then the Volturi start to take Alice, right? Mm-hmm. And then Carlisle is like, uh-uh. She's my daughter. And then he runs. And then he and Aro do a big jump. And uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh! Uh oh! <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, Carlisle loses his head a little bit there, yeah. huh? Yeah, that's how I would say that. So yeah, you see <laughs> his body like hit the ground, and Michael Sheen just is kind of smiling, and it pans down, and what's in Michael Sheen's hand? Gwyneth but, Paltrow's head. Where'd he get it? <laughs> where'd he get it? It was in the box. What's in the box? Sorry, wrong movie. But yeah, so that that really gets things going, and it's an all-out fight with the wolves mm-hmm. and the vampires, and people people die. A lot of people die. Rami Malek, who can control the elements, punches a hole in the ground, and people fall in it. And then maybe the most disappointing twist and all of cinema happens and it none of it was real yeah (laughs) it was all alice showing aro what would happen and i threw my hands up in exhaustion he did (laughs) i can confirm that so mad because i was like (laughs) i didn't think there were going to be like meaningful deaths in this movie and guess what there weren't (laughs) (laughs) none of it mattered (laughs) and everything's i guess just chill now yeah. I don't they know. De- they decide to leave. Did you think it was really funny when they were like all just zooming? How long do you think it took them to film that scene? Too <laughs> just long. those guys just like walking. Because like all the I know that. getting the zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I realistically, I know that it's just them walking and then they speed it up. But mm-hmm. like imagine just having to like walk <laughs> entirely. That's so stupid in my head. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, none of it was real. Nothing matters. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, so then, I don't know. At this point, I was so mad that I stopped paying attention. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, we're we're basically at the end. So Edward and Jacob have a little conversation. Oh, no. Oh, my God. You missed, like, the whole thing with the other guy that came in. Oh, yeah, there's another uh, Dampier from Brazil that Alice went to get. Yeah. And he's like, uh, when I was seven, I stopped aging, and now I'm 150, so everything's cool. Yeah. So then it goes to just kind of, like, wrap-up scene stuff. So Jacob and Edward are talking, and Alice looks at the future 
and sees and them sees like them together forever. Beach. Yeah. Yeah. And Jacob's like, should I call you dad? And Edward goes, no, rightfully. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Please. some common sense in these goddamn movies. <laughs> And then we finally end back up at the meadow, mm -hmm. where Bella... Couldn't tell you. <laughs> where <laughs> Bella has trained herself to, uh, like, let down her shield so Edward can read her mind. And he, she shows him clips of... Oh, that's of, what was happening. Clips of them Yeah, then it's a recap of the last five movies. <laughs> Yeah. And then it ends, and there's the longest credit scene in the history of ever. <laughs> oh my god, so when it started playing, Ryan was like, please don't make me watch every single person that's been in these movies. And I was like, no, we're <laughs> this is fine, we can watch this. And then they started showing people that weren't in this movie. And I was like, well, why are they getting credits? They weren't in this movie. And they got credited in the films that they were in. Yeah. It was the most wild thing. That'd be like if in Avengers Endgame, everybody who had been in the MCU got a credit. <laughs> yeah. It was it was bonkers. Finally, he let us turn it off once we got to Esme. But let me tell you, all it, all it did was go through the rest of the colons. And then, sorry, the rest of the colons, Sans, Edward, and Bella. Then Jacob... Then Edward, then Bella. Yeah. And then it's it, really over. We did it's it. A, it's a wild choice that they made. <laughs> yeah. So now that we did our recap, do you want to go to a quick hydration station? Yes. As yes, per please. tradition? Yes. Hydration. Hello. And welcome, welcome to Hydration Station. Yeah! Woo. This is the part uh, of the podcast where we drink water, because it's important to drink responsibly as adults. Mm -hmm. So take a sip, hang back, relax, and then we'll get back with the show. Yeah. I recently changed the filter in my Brita pitcher, and the water tastes so much better. <laughs> wow! Yeah. How long had it been? Who knows? <laughs> I think maybe since January and this is May. Okay. 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 Fancy I also, boy. I think I also live in a region where maybe the water isn't the best. But Yeah, it's I pretty mean, mineral it be, loaded down there. Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. Don't get me wrong. But Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Drink some water. <laughs> Drink water. Hydration Station. So yeah, that was Hydration Station. What a good fun time. Back to Twilight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like you were right earlier when you said that we weren't excited to watch this one. Yeah, I was about to say. Because um, the first one put us in a weird headspace. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to ask, how did you feel going into this one <laughs> versus I, the I last I one? Just, I wasn't, ex like, I was genuinely excited to watch these with you today. And then mm -hmm. the first one I was like, oh, I forgot all of this, huh? <laughs> I forgot all of this. Or I'm just more hyper aware of it now. But, um, I don't know. It was fine. Like, I feel like more stuff happens in the, well... More stuff happens on screen in this one. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, yeah. Whether or not it actually happens is beside the point. <laughs> uh, so mad. <laughs> so mad. That was the, um, the moment when Carlisle lost his head and you... You, like, had a very shocked face. Was that genuine, or...? That was genuine. I was like, okay. I didn't think they were going to kill anybody. And then when and, they started killing people, I was like, okay. Oh, they're killing let's... everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then it was a dream. Yeah. Basically. Um, like, okay, well. Did you see that it was a dream coming or 
was it actually surprising? Be honest. It might it it might be <laughs> the four beers that I had before this, but I did uh-huh. not see it being a dream. <laughs> I feel like I should have because I feel like it was very telegraphed in hindsight. <laughs> but yeah. um, yeah, I when they killed Carlisle, I thought that was real. I was like, ooh. Yeah. We're gonna get spicy. <laughs> and also, I feel like, because I, I went to go see this in theaters way back when it came out, and I remember having that initial reaction and having a whole theater of women screaming. Mm-hmm. Wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it was never laid out that way in the book. I was about to say, does, this, does that whole sequence happen in the book? It happens in the book, and like I don't know if I just glossed over reading it but it was not to that extent like it was very much just like people will die chaos will ensue this is gonna fracture vampires like as a society kind of a thing so it was so, it wasn't so... like a non-serious moment but it was just kind of played off as like alice showed him what can happen and it's not good so uh in the book, it's just like Alice shows him, and then they talk. Yeah. In no okay. way, in no way were they like Carlisle loses his head, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Jasper dies. Thank God. Uh- yeah, Dude, that was <laughs> maybe <laughs> that was like the one death I was okay with, and when it wasn't real, I was horribly disappointed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and just like a bunch of people died. Seth and uh, Leah? Leah both die, and Esme doesn't. Esme almost dies. No, she almost dies, but Leah saves her. Uh, Alice kills Jane with Sam. Mm-hmm. My, I mean, like, my favorite, so... my favorite boy gets bisected. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I just. So the actor that played Marcus did a really good job. I love him. But they never explain in the book or in the movie why he cares, like why he is that way. Because when he was about to die, he was like, oh, finally. Which like relatable, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it me. But and so like, I don't, I don't know. And I, the thing is, is, like, I don't know if that's just because I know so much about Twilight through like I, other I, sources cuz I don't remember I also who it was in the book feel like a big trope of vampire fiction is like they're over it and they just want to die. Mm, that's fair. So that uh, that kind of read to me as like oh he's just over it and he's like oh thank god I'm finally dying. <laughs> um, like isn't that like a big like trope of the Anne Rice vampires is like they're all just kind of bored cuz they've lived so long. Yeah, yeah. I think with Interview with a Vampire, that's why they have... I know it's not her name in the movie, but I'm just going to say Kirsten Dunst. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I don't remember the name of the girl. The only one I remember is, like, Lestrade? Lestat. Lestat. No. Lestrade? Lestat is Twilight, right? No, that's Laurent. Laurent. Okay. I knew it was something similar. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, um, um, but I feel like I feel like the being over being immortal is a big trope of tr- vampires. So that yeah. one that didn't really bother me. And maybe I'm giving him some leeway because he's my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides Michael Sheen, Michael Sheen <laughs> having the most fun. Yeah, Michael Sheen was just so excited to be there, and I'm so proud of him. He did a good job. Yeah. Lee Pace was very attractive. Lee Pace fucking get it <laughs> like I always forget how hot Lee Pace is and then he'll show up and something is like oh fuck Lee Pace what are you doing here <laughs> you and that sexy voice of yours <laughs> oh man uh, yeah and then um, who else Rami Malek I mean, was there. I was like, they're all hot. You know, like, I mean, like, to some extent, like, all of them are attractive. There's not an unattractive person in the movie. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, uh, we skipped over Charlie and uh, Sue getting together. Except I... I don't know. It's weird because... The movie doesn't really address it in any big way. They're just kind of hanging out in a couple scenes. And that's and that's where, like, the difference, I think... And this is, like, an overarching theme between, like, movie and book. Because in the book you're able to, like, see how Bella perceives it so much more because you're literally just in her thoughts 24-7. Mm-hmm. Like, you see that she's like, I'm excited that they've kind of started like hanging out and i'm glad that whenever i come over she's around for him kind of stuff yeah because so they remember... played up a bit more in the book but i and i think that it's just kind of hard to translate something that's fully narrated versus something that has to focus on dialogue yeah because i had to ask you is there something going on between those two Mm-hmm. because it's like i mean they're hanging out a lot but <laughs> i don't know they're just <laughs> Just I also pals, thought she I was guess. Jacob's mom for the longest time. <laughs> no, Jacob's mom died, remember? No. <laughs> and Jacob has sisters who we never meet. Hmm. That's a fun fact that I didn't know. <laughs> I probably did know that, but I just don't remember it. I feel um, like we've talked about it before. Yeah. Um... I don't know if you've said, but how do you feel about the 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 dream ending thing? Like I said, uh, when I saw it in theaters, shocked. Completely, mm-hmm. like, it got me. It did. But again, because it wasn't laid out like that in the book, and I knew that there was I knew, that, like, a fight wasn't supposed to happen, so I thought that they just, like, were like, yeah, we read Twilight, but, like, we're gonna do our own thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just decided to kill a bunch of characters, which, like, bold move. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're just going to bounce from the source material, like, what a way to do it. Arguably, I, <laughs> I would have loved that more if they had, like, committed to killing people. Like, what a move. <laughs> um, but since I knew it was coming, I was more excited to see your reaction. And your reaction didn't let me down. Because um, I, like, the hands in the air thing, I think, is relatable. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just kind of like once you've seen like a like a shock or you know the twist like it just never hits the same like than that first time. So I'm trying to kind of liken back to when I did see it. So I remember it being like <gasps> dramatic, especially like that first moment when you saw like Carlisle fall because you because at first you was like oh shit he just like tripped like that boy just face planted huh, <laughs> and then yeah, you cause... see his whole ass head. <laughs> yeah, because uh, when it happened. And he, like, his body hit the ground. I was like, oh, that's weird. And then it, like, lingers. And I was like, okay, he's not getting up. And it pans down. And Michael Sheen's holding his head. It's like, oh, shit. Things are getting crazy. And that was the thing, too, that maybe, like, would have lended that this isn't really happening. But I feel like in movies when, like, especially, like, named characters die, like, they linger on that for a second. They mm-hmm. did not linger on any death. It was, you're going to watch this happen. <laughs> well, I also feel like when things linger on deaths, they're a little more, what do I want to say? Like, emotionally developed, maybe? Mm-hmm. And I feel like these last movies don't really linger on the emotion as much as like maybe the first one did. And that might be because they're male directed and not female directed. And I would agree with that. Um, So that, that part didn't really like strike me as odd that it didn't linger too much on the deaths. That's fair. And then it was, I mean, as far as action sequences go, like I feel like it was like choreographed beautifully like, there wasn't, like, you didn't get to linger on, like, the shock of it. Like, because it just, like, it happened, and then somebody else died, and then somebody else died. And mm-hmm. then one of the bad guys died. And then two of the people that you're supposed to like died. Yeah. And I, well, okay, so I will say, I don't know if it's because I've seen Avengers Endgame. And this movie came out before Avengers Endgame. But it felt weirdly small 
for a for a big finale fight. Yeah, but I mean, this movie wasn't like this whole series is not really about the whole like it's not like action, you know. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like it has action elements, but I would say first and foremost, it's supposed to be like a romance drama. That's fair. I will give you that. Like, if the Hunger Games didn't have a big battle in it, that would be really weird. Mm hmm. But. Though I've only ever seen the first one, so. Oh, I, I'm just kidding. I don't want to watch the Hunger Games. I don't. I didn't really care about it that much. It was fine. Um. <laughs> No, but like if like if other movies that are like are like if an Avengers movie didn't have a big battle at the end, like that would be weird and out of place, and would be an interesting subversion of the genre maybe for once. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't like Marvel movies that much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not it's not Twilight has never tried to place itself as an action thriller kind of movie. It's always that's fair. It knows yeah. what it is. And what it yeah. is is problematic, filled with <laughs> plot holes, and exhausting. I started this series, Matthew, with, like, all the love for Twilight <laughs> while understanding its air. And then, like, I don't... It just has highlighted <laughs> and then, so oops. much. <laughs> and then, whoops. <laughs> it's like we hit that curve. I think, I think maybe Eclipse, because I feel like I still liked it in Eclipse. Because we just... Both of us were just like, God... Jasper fucking sucks. And then I think that with Breaking, it just like, it just tipped. There was like that tipping point, and then I was just kind of. Mm hmm. Um, with that thought, do we kind of want to talk about our feelings on the series as a whole? Sure. Um, because I would almost agree. I, it, it, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it almost seemed like you think that Eclipse is maybe like the peak of the series yeah or, or do you are are you do you think new moon is obviously not the best the breaking dawns are not the best do you think the first one or the the eclipse so i okay the reason i like the first one the best is just like the like full nostalgia i love the like green tinge like the bluish green tinge to everything mm-hmm uh, Catherine Hardwick had a vision and she executed it and I love that for her. Um, but as far as like story goes, I think Eclipse definitely has the most meat to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I feel like, so it kind of is this like Twilight, New Moon kind of tips down and then Eclipse shoots back up to like just under the first Twilight for me. And then... Okay. It just kind of drops off. <laughs> it drops off with the whole fetus baby <laughs> rhetoric. Yeah, and it, and I think I think that you're in the last episode we talked about how like it just kind of shows growth, and I do think that that's kind of what it comes down to is just like you know being raised in a Catholic school. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, I shared ideology that I don't share anymore. Um, but no, and so it was just like, and so like when it, I remember like reading it and I used to really like Breaking Dawn and then like this watch through again, I, it might just be because like more heightened about social issues currently, but it just, it was a miss for me. And then Creepy Baby, although we didn't really get to see Chuck Esme, which is the next bit I would live, laugh, love to talk about. Can we go to the Twilight Museum? <laughs> is that a thing? Yes. Where is it? Where do you think Washington? It, where do you think it is? Washington? I actually don't know where it is. It is... It's called the Forever Twilight in Forks Collection. And they have Chuck Esme. Mm. They have, like, the actual prosthetic doll that they use for the baby. Look at her. Ooh, that's a haunted doll. 
Look at that baby. That, that's a haunted dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Ugh. can we go? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you have any final thoughts on the on the film or the series or would you do it again? Which ones can I make you watch again in the next like two years? So I think I would I would be open to watching the first three again. Okay. I think Eclipse is for sure my favorite. Okay. Because I think, I think it delivers on the promise of the first two films in a way that Breaking Dawn does not. <laughs> in a night, because I feel like with Eclipse, I was going into it like, okay, the wolves and the Cullens have a treaty. The they're gonna fight the Volturi, but then Breaking Dawn was like, hey, no, we're we're gonna take that away for a second for some dramatic tension. It's like, okay, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, New Moon was not good, but I would rather watch it than Breaking Dawn Part One or Two. Yeah. Um. Ooh, should that be our Twilight... last ranking? We're gonna rank them. I guess we're kind of are, aren't we? We could, yeah, we could like codify our rankings though. Okay. Um so, and I don't know. The first one happened to me <laughs> so long ago that I don't a hundred percent remember it. Yeah, I remember when it was only one Twilight movie a year, and mm-hmm. I we was... went from that to watching all five and three. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I feel like the accelerated pace kind of helped. <laughs> Because if I had to like wait a movie between or wait a year between these two movies, I would have hated this one um, more than I did. But um, so yeah, I think okay. Let's 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 rank these boys. Okay. So I think lowest for sure is Part One: Breaking Dawn. Okay. It took it. It made some choices that I did not enjoy. Mm-hmm. It kind of backpedaled on the on the plot development of Eclipse in a very unsatisfactory way. Mm-hmm. That was another thing that I meant to touch on is in the book, um, you know, after Bella and Edward got married and they, like, consummated their relationship, mm-hmm. she was actually going back on wanting to become a vampire so quickly. She was like, yeah, I could I could keep this up for a, a couple of years and go to college and visit uh, Renee in Jacksonville, Baseball whatever. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Christmases with Charlie and all this stuff. And then she found out she was pregnant. And then it just like all of that dropped because the only thing that really fulfills a woman is motherhood. Mm hmm. I also think that they left out, like, the implication of, like, so, like, they know that it's possible, so why wouldn't vampires try to make more of creepy doll babies? Well, I mean, she's not really, like, is she, like, stronger than normal vampires? Is there any benefit to having her around? Because the, the guy that they brought in just seemed like a normal vampire. But we don't know. I mean, like... I guess that's true. It doesn't really dive into the, the and then it, of it all. Yeah, and then, like, it begs the question of, like, you know, Rosalie genuinely wanted, you know, family. Is she going to make Emmett go have a... Go have mm-hmm. another one that's hers that she can raise? Yeah, because we did kind of gloss over it, but, like, Rosalie is very much, like, I love this baby, I want to take care of this baby. Yeah, and that was very much why Bella, like, called her. And I think that it lays it out a little more in the books. And I feel Mm -hmm. like it also tries to, like, portray Rosalie more as, like, greedy. 
because she becomes, like, overly protective and very much, like, anything to save the baby. And I think it kind of shows when Rosalie comes in right after the baby's born. It's just like, I'll take her. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. There are more ways to be fulfilled as a woman than to have children. Yeah. Um... But yeah, that being said, so part one is my lowest. Mm-hmm. I think maybe New Moon is next. Okay. Because, I mean, I don't know. It just, it doesn't really, it just kind of feels like a side story. Um, and then Breaking Dawn part two, I think will be next. And then the first one, and then Eclipse. I think is my ranking. I would say my ranking is pretty close, but switch the top two. I Which... just I don't think New Moon is is very strong on. I feel like Twilight One and Eclipse are both strong on their own. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you. Um, New Moon isn't. You need a lot of context from the first one, and then kind of not a lot happens. And I don't know, it just, it, it feels like filler. And when it's a, you know, two hour movie of filler, that feels crazy. And Breaking Down mm-hmm. Part 1 feels a lot, like, pretty similar. Like, not a lot really happens. And then it's just kind of like, you just sit in there like, ugh, I've sat through this so many times. Mm-hmm. And then it's over. And then it's over. <laughs> and you're like, why did I watch this? Now I'm sad. <laughs> Everything's forgiven, right? Here's a fifty dollar. So any any final final thoughts? We've kind of been wrapping it up and kind of slowing down anyway. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts are: if you're watching the Twilight movies, don't watch Breaking Dawn Part One. <laughs> Just skip over to Breaking Dawn Part Two, and then stop when everybody starts dying. And it's a perfect movie. <laughs> um. But yeah, any any final thoughts? Um for you? I feel like I feel like my final thoughts on like the series is like it was interesting to see my views of it change so much. Mm-hmm. Um so it it's interesting to be where I'm at now. Will I watch the series again? Probably. I'm a simple lady. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is broody vampire. And, um, I don't, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. (laughs) We watched Uh, it. We did it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to. So that's, that's something going for it. Um, Uh, my favorite part was watching Jasper die. (laughs) mm -hmm. A good More of that. Yeah. More. More killing Confederates, please. Yes. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, since this is our last episode before hiatus, do mm-hmm. we want to do like final thoughts on season one? <laughs> of uh, the Purple Magic Cocktail Hour? Sure. We learned a lot. Had mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Um, wrote a lot of coffee. Yep. And I'm excited to see what season two brings. Matthew, what about yeah. you? Yeah, I I don't think I really like thought that this would be a three year thing <laughs> when we started it. Yeah. Which is bonkers to think about, but you know I don't know. It it's been fun. I we wrote some fun fan fiction. We did we, write fan fiction. We we watched some fun movies that we maybe didn't talk about as well as we could have. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. We we ranked some songs and maybe some ways that challenged our friendship. <laughs> but I I would say overall I've had a lot of fun. I don't yeah. I don't necessarily like get a lot of opportunities for collaborative creation in my life and this is this has been a fun one yeah it has it's been good i'm glad that we're friends 
and I love you, bud. I love you too, bud. I'm not just saying that because I'm kind of (laughs) drunk. I love you too, pal. So this has been Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hour. Uh, Like Matthew Mm -hmm. touched on, we're going to be going on hiatus for a bit. We don't really know how long, but we're going to, when we come back, we're hoping to have some stuff figured out and yeah, shake things up, see what happens. Do some more collaboration, you know? We love yeah. to see it. So as we say at the end of every episode, and for the last time in a while, yeah. clink! Clink! It's what I imagine Jay and Silent Bob were like in high school. Buy the asset that was Sonic's body for Sonic the Hedgehog. Just like, slide the beef scale up a little bit. <laughs> and boom! It was a dystopian hellscape. I said it like three times during the movie. (laughs) Oh, this is okay. I don't know. Tangent. Do you remember? (laughs) Do you remember Man of Steel when they fight in an IHOP? No, but that's not the point of this movie. <laughs> oh, but it's so funny. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so 